Hi. So in the last video, we have seen some informal guidelines in database design. Next, we have to see how to design this relation database formally. So before going into this formal design methodology, we have to see some definitions. So in this video, I'll be defining what is a functional dependency and also uh, what are keys. So functional dependency. So functional dependencies are actually constraints and these constraints are derived from the meaning and interrelationships of the data attributes. So th these are some constraints on the attributes and these ad uh, constraints are derived from the meaning of these attributes. That is, for example, a name is related to a particular admission number or a phone number is related to a particular name. So it is derived from the meaning and also the relationship between the data attributes that are stored in the database. So these are actually constraints between attributes. And these are used to specify some formal measure or the goodness of relational database design. So when we uh, design, we have already seen that we have to make good relations or good tables. So we, these functional dependencies are actually some formal measures of the goodness of this relational database, relational designs. So it is a constraint between two sets of attributes. A set of attributes may be related to some other set of attributes. So it is a constraint between two sets of attributes. And functional dependencies and keys are used to define this normal forms for relations. So we will see what is formal form and all the later sessions. So functional, uh, mainly in formal database design, we use this functional dependency and keys to define all these normal forms, how to design the data tables. So we'll see what is this functional dependency. We will define this functional dependency. Consider there is a relation R with a set of attributes a1, a2, up to an. So a set of attributes x. So x is a set of attributes which, which is a subset of this relation. Functionally determines a set of attributes y. So y is also another set of attributes from the same relation. If the value of x determines a unique value for y, then we can say that x is so x functionally determines y or conversely we can say y is function dependent on x. So x is a set of attributes and y is another set of attributes. And if the value of x determines the value of y, then we can say y is functionally dependent on x or x functionally determines y. So it is denoted using arrow mark, x arrow y. So it means y is functionally dependent on x or x functionally determines y. So it is a functional dependency, it is between two sets of attributes. So x is a set of attributes. It may be a single attribute or it may be a multiple attribute. So it's it is a it is a it is between two sets of attributes x and y that are subsets of R. So it is a subset of this relation. X and R are subsets of R. And it specifies a constraint on the possible tuples. So it's a constraint on all the tuples or on all the rows of that table. And the constraint is like this. For any two tuples, T1 and T2, for any two rows in that relation, in R of R. R of R means we have already seen it is a relational state. So at a particular instance of time, what the values in that table. It is developed using R of R. So if any two rows in that table have t1 of x equal to t2 of x, if any two of the rows have the same x values, then they must have the same values for y also. Then we can say y is functionally dependent on x or x functionally determines y. So it is a constraint. So it, this is a definition. So it is denoted using x to y and it is meaning is x functionally determines y. And it is a constraint. 
constraint means the constraint is like this if uh, at any instance at any table instance if we insert some value or if we delete some value or if we do modify some value this constraint should be there constraint is if two rows have same x values then y values will also be same then we can say y is functional depend on x we will see some examples <coughs> so social security number we have already seen this employee table in employee table we have social security number uh, social security number determines employee name so social security number functionally determines employee name so it can be denoted using ssn2 e name so this means e name is functionally depend on ssn or the value of ssn functionally determines e name so employee name is functional depend on ssn you know that thing. so another example project number determines project name and location so it can be denoted using p number to p name comma p location so this means a p number functionally determines both p name and p location this can be uh, also also mentioned like this p name is functionally depend, dependent on p number and p location is functionally dependent on p number another example employee ssn social security number and project number determines the hour, uh, hours per week that the employee works on that project so it can be denoted using this ssn comma p number to hours so hours is functionally dependent on ssn and p number so hours is functionally dependent on ssn and p number or ssn and p number functionally determines hours so hours you know hours per week uh, a particular employee works on a project depends on ssn so the social security of that number and also the project number is working so this is a table we can see different functional dependencies from this table here in this table employee table we have social security number which is the key of the relation so it functionally determines e name birth date address and department number so uh, birth date is dependent on ssn the birth date will change if you see in this table we have uh, ssn uh, smith name so smith's name is dependent on ssn uh, wherever ssn value is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 then the value of e name will be smith there so that is meant by functional dependence in this table if you see uh, we have department department uh, in this table we have d name d number and d manager ssn so here d name is dependent on d number or d manager ssn is dependent on d number so whenever the value of that d number changes d manager ssn also changes here in this table we have works on here hours is dependent on both ssn and p number when both the values of if both the values of ssn and p number changes then hours will also change if you you can see from this thing uh ssn here it is one two three four five six seven eight nine we have same ssn in the second row also but the hours is different so that means it is dependent on hours is dependent on both ssn and p number it is not dependent on ssn alone it is dependent on ssn and p number so because here p number is different in these two rows so hours is dependent on ssn and p number Similarly, we can see other functional dependencies also in these other tables also. <clears throat> so, an FD, we usually call functional dependency uh, using FD. So, an FD is a property of the attributes in a schema. So, it is a property of the attributes. It is a property between some attributes in the schema R. And this constraint must hold on every relation instance R, R of R. That means, whenever we insert something or whenever we delete something uh, whenever we modify something in the table this constraint should hold if e name is dependent on ssn that should hold whenever we insert something or whenever we delete something so another property is there if k is the key of r then k functionally determines all attributes in r so if k is the key of that relation then k functionally determines all attributes in R or we can conversely say that all attributes is functionally dependent on the key so in this example if you see this employee table 
we have this employee table and in this employee table uh, ssn is the key social security number is the key so all other attributes so other attributes are e name birth date address and e number so all these attributes are functionally uh, depend on ssn because ssn is the key of that relation so in this table d number is the key of this table so uh, d name and d manager ssn is functionally depend on d number so that is that is another property so if k is key of a relation if, if k is the key of r then k functionally determines all attributes in r since it is because we cannot have two distinct tuples with t1 of k equal to t2 of k so if k is key of r then all other attributes in that table is functionally depend on uh, k so we cannot have distinct two distinct tuples with t1 of k equal to t2 of k so we will see one example here we have a teach table teach relation uh, the tuples in it uh, with, we have uh, three attributes teacher course and text so if we see this we cannot say whether we, there is a functional dependency between uh, attributes so uh, if we see text to course if we see this functional dependency if we see, uh, let me take this point so if we see this uh, text to course there is a functional dependency whenever the value of text changes the value of y also changes so if you see uh, here the text this is the author's name so bartram uh, writes only data structures book or martin writes only data management book hoffman writes only compiler books and horowitz writes only data structures book there is a functional dependency between text and course so course is functionally depend on text then we can see uh, teacher to course so teacher to course in this case we cannot say there is a functional dependency because here smith two rows have same values for x but we do not have same value for y so t1 of x equal to t1 of x and t2 of y, t1 of y not equal to t2 of y so there is no functional dependency then if we take uh, text to teacher text to teacher also there is no functional dependency if you can see this text to teacher there is no functional dependency if t1 of x equal to t2 of x but in this case there is a functional dependency but usually that won't happen but in this example there is a functional dependency between t, uh, text to teacher then course to text so if we take this course to text there is no functional dependency because we have uh, two rows with the same values data structures but the uh, y values different in both the cases so there is no functional dependency between course to text so text is not functional depend on course then so one thing to note from this uh, table or relation is that we cannot define functional dependency from this table unless we understand the meaning of these attributes it is not possible to find out the functional dependency from a populated table or from this instance it is not at all possible so not that in order to define in order to define the functional dependencies we need to understand the meaning of the attributes we have to understand the meaning of the attributes then only we can uh, say there is a functional dependency unless and until we do not know the meaning of the attributes it is not possible whether we it's not possible to say whether there is a dependency between two sets of attributes so because there may be hundreds of values in this row in this in this table it was easy because we have only four values in the rows only four rows are there so we can easily find out whether there is any functional dependency but it is not possible to find out functional dependency from instances from instable instances for that we have to understand the meaning between these attributes then only we can find out the relationship for example in the previous example in the employee table it is easy to understand social security number and e name e name is definitely depend on social security number as the social security number changes the e name also changes so we know the meaning e name is for uh, employee name and social security number is like this so it is not possible to determine functional dependency from the table so we have to know the meaning of the attributes 
So it is a property of the attributes in the schema. We take out this arrow, okay. So it is a property of the attributes in the schema table. So given the instance or population of a table, even if you are given an extension of a table, we can conclude is that a functional dependency may exist between certain attributes. We can check from a table whether there is a functional dependency is there if the populated table is given. We cannot say that this functional dependency is there, but if a functional dependency is given, we can simply verify whether it is that functional dependency is there or not by verifying the rows in the table or tuples in the relation. <coughs> so what we can definitely conclude is that certain functional dependencies do not exist. This can be concluded. If a table is given, if a table of values is given, then we can definitely conclude that this functional dependency does not exist in this table. Like that we can conclude. But it is not possible to find out the functional dependencies from a table. <coughs> so this is another example. So we don't know, we have given a table with four attributes A, B, C and D. And we do not know what is this attribute. The meaning is unknown. So it is very difficult to find out the uh, functional dependency from this table because we don't know what is A, what is B, what is C, what is D. We are simply given some notations. So it is not at all possible to find out the functional dependency. Only thing we can simply whether there is a functional dependency between these set of attributes. So some of the functional dependencies, if we check uh, A to B, we can simply check so if we take A to B, if we check if there is a functional dependency from A to B, we can see that uh, same values for A1, uh, X is there, but B, we have different values. And B to A also, there is no functional dependency. If we check there, we have same B, B to B values here, but the Y value is different. And D to C also, there is no functional dependency. If we check, we have same D3 values, but we have different uh, C values or Y values is different. So there is no functional dependency between A to B, B to A and D to C. If we take another example, B to C. So if we check B to C, if we check B to C, there is a functional dependency because we have different values for B1, B2, B. And I here we have same values for B2, but we have same values for Y also. So that means there is a functional dependency between B to C. See this. We have same X values. B to here, two rows have same X values. And we have the same Y values also. So there is a functional dependency. Then C to B also, we can conclude here. We have same C values. So B value is also C. That means there is a functional dependency between B to C and C to B. So B is functional dependent on C and C is functional dependent on B. Then, if we check the combination of these, we have already mentioned x to y is a functional dependency. x is a set of attributes. So, this kind of functional attributes can also exist. Or functional dependencies can also exist. a comma b to c. So, if we check a comma b to c, there is a functional dependency. So, c is functional dependent on both a and b. And also a a, B to D, there is a functional dependency. So we can check. We can simply verify whether there is a functional dependency by checking the values of the tuples. Then C, D to B, also there is a functional dependency. So B is functional dependent on C and D. So we can simply verify in this table. 